Hey all, welcome to the next Cyberdrain Tech in 5 minutes. Today we're going to be talking about Azure Functions, how they work, what their functionality is, and how you can use them to ease your automation at your MSP. This is actually going to be a two-part video because I also want to talk about Azure Automation, which is a different way of running scripts within Azure. So let's jump into this and see why I like Azure Functions so much. So, as always, we'll have to browse to the Azure portal before we do anything. And one of the first things you can do is you can start creating a resource. When we click on create a resource, in the top used list, often there is the function app, and that is what we're targeting. Function apps are little pieces of um, serverless code, so you don't have to run an entire server to run that specific application that Azure hosts for you. So let's try creating one, and I'll try going through exactly what we're doing. So first we're creating a new resource group called Azure Function. When we're creating this resource group, that's where all the resources will be placed. And then we have to give the Azure function a specific host name. In our case, we'll call it Kelvin's test function. You can see here, we can choose between code and a Docker container. In our case, we only want them to host our code. And that is the powerful functionality about it. We don't ask them for entire compute power. We don't ask them create a virtual machine for me. While that all happens under the hood, we're just saying we want to be able to run PowerShell in Europe, in our case. West Europe, that is. There. Then next we click on hosting. And here you actually have a couple of cool models. So consumption is probably the one as an MSP you want to use most. Consumption actually has no cost as long as the function does not run. It does start having costs when the function starts running, but only if it runs for longer than a specific time and for each instance it runs. So this is actually a super cheap option to run weekly, daily, even hourly scripts, simply because of the low cost of an Azure function in consumption mode. As soon as you start hitting that API constantly, for example, you have hundreds of requests a second, don't use consumption, switch it either to functions premium or my favorite, an app service plan. In our case, we're choosing the Windows stack because we're running PowerShell. Next, we'll click on monitoring. And this is actually the, the place where most people make mistakes. Application Insights is a wonderful way of seeing exactly what is happening to your application and to your code. But it is super expensive in comparison to the consumption model where you might even only use cents a month if you run a script every five minutes. Application Insight is somewhere between $50 and $80 a month simply because of the data it starts using and ingesting. So let's click on Nowhere because we don't need that right now. We'll click on Next. We can create some tags if we want and then create the entire application. And what happens when you create this application is it will simply start hosting a piece of code for us. And by default, that is the run.ps1 code that Depends on the trigger, which we'll jump into right after this. Um, Azure Functions allow you to run things on a schedule or even run things with a webhook. That means that you can simply visit an HTTP page and that script will then be executed by that page. This is very cool if you're combining it with a ticket system that has something like an outbound call or if you're combining it with your RMM system to simply pick up some data and retrieve that. You can also use this to protect your key, your, your um, um, passwords and credentials with something like a key vault. So there's a lot of cool options that Azure Functions have that we can deep dive into directly. But the biggest benefit is that you are able to automate on the cheap. Azure Functions uh, in the consumption model cost you cents or pennies per month. And in, in case you do have an Azure Function that is used a lot, for example, on my blog, I have something like an IP lookup tool or uh, um, a, D a dynamic DNS tool that you can also host in an Azure function. The most cost you'll probably have a month is somewhere around five euros, unless you're starting to do really APIs at scales like the CyberDrain port scan. That one uh, costs several thousands of euros in the consumption model, but it would only cost hundreds of euros if you use the app service plan or in a premium mode. So now that we created our functions, you'll see right here, this little thing is called functions. We'll click on that and then we're able to click on the add button. 
And when we click on the add button, you actually get a bunch of cool options. For example, how do you want the script to run? That's simply what they're asking you. And one of the examples is, do you want it to run on an HTTP trigger? So a webhook. Do you want it to run on a timer trigger? But you can also say, hey, I want it when uh, specific uh, queues, Azure queues are touched, or I want it when a new file is created. There's a lot of options here and there's they're expanding these options so rapidly. Right now, we're focusing on the HTTP trigger because that's the easiest one to test and to show you how it works. So when we create the HTTP trigger, it asks for a, a name, and that name is going to be a part of the name of the URL we visit. So just remember that, and we'll type here um, name code, because that's the default code. And the authorization level is what type of API key do you want to use? Do you want to use a function API key, an administrative API key, which is one level higher, or anonymous authentication? In our case, we're choosing anonymous because it's a very simple code that we're going to be developing. So in this case, we hit OK, we wait a few seconds, and you'll see right here, it should appear. Name code, there we go. And if we click right here, now we can get the function URL and immediately browse to it. You can see Kelvin's test function as we named the entire API before, and then name code. Let's browse to that, shall we? It could be that it's not online yet, because one of the things that always happens, it starts downloading modules for you in the background. So as you can see, this HTTP function triggered successfully, it executed. If you pass a name in the query string or a request body, you can get a personalized response. So let's try that. Name is Kelvin. And there we go. Hello, Kelvin. So how did this execute? How did this work? When you go to code and test or when you're using Visual Studio Code and connect it to this application, you'll immediately see the PowerShell code. And pretty much anything right in between these values is what you can use to create your own code. For example, I can change this to whatever I want. I can say, no, no, this is not allowed. And even change the status code to 401 if I want, or access denied if I want. And that's a lot of cool functionality that you can create with this. Because if you can script it in PowerShell, that means you can host it in an Azure function and make it accessible to everyone. That also means that internally you could make a user creation script available for people and they'd only have to browse to the right URL with the right credentials. So that, that, that's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with Azure functions. The problem about um, this entire thing is that it's very code oriented. So a lot of people try to avoid it because they fear that automation is going to be very difficult in Azure. For that, I've actually created a blog that is called the Deploy PowerShell Functions, which simply gives you one button to click to deploy it in the correct way, and you can change the code immediately. So you can edit it to anything you want. So let's recap that, shall we? PowerShell functions allow you to run code on a schedule or using a webhook trigger without having to host the entire infrastructure yourself. The first million executions, if I'm not mistaken, are completely free and after that you're paying cents. So even if you run a script every five minutes, this will cost you almost nothing and is an easy way to run your M365 automation. For example, to process all your tenants. There's some downsides to using Azure Functions, such as a maximum runtime of five or 10 minutes. It depends on what you've set in the code yourself. But the maximum runtime in consumption is 10 minutes. And one of the downsides is that when you have an API that is very busy and actively used, you'll start paying a lot more in the consumption model and you'll have to move to an app service plan or to the premium service model. I hope this helps you create a little bit more Azure automation. I hope this helps you understand the pricing a little more. And like I said, feel free to ask me any questions. I'll be dropping the links down in the comment section below so you can make sure that you can deploy these Azure functions without being confronted with too much cost. As always, please like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next time.